Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are doing part two which is the final part of our gorgeous V-stitch top. Check it out. Oh. <laughs> well I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. Mine is probably a little bit tighter than yours. You're probably thinking where's her ease? She talked about ease last time and it's not there. I did that on purpose because yours truly is actually on the CSIRO diet. <laughs> For those of you from Melbourne know who that is. Um, and overseas people don't know that but it's actually just a diet and the thing is I'm losing like a kilo a week at a time and I knew that by the time I wanted to wear this I'd be down and already I was you know made this tight to begin with so it's starting to fit me normal now so there you go guys I just wanted to show you what it looked like on so you can have a look see it's very nice and I made it long enough to cover my hello that area <laughs> and I mentioned with our v-stitch top and I'll get nice and close that see this part here if we continued going up to there where our shoulders were your top would be sitting right under here so what I did was I cast off there and there and I just went across that way and I just went across that way and I did the same to the other side and that is all in this tutorial that you see today then we did you didn't you will <laughs> two rows of single crochet on one side two rows single crochet on the other then we join them and from here we just um sewed with a whip stitch i think it is back stitch whip stitch whip stitch <laughs> all the way up along there okay there and there and then we put a row of single crochet around the collar a row of single crochet around your little edge here and a row of single crochet well, you can see it nice and close just down the bottom there you go now the reason I popped it down the bottom is I like to make sure all of these side seams are in perfectly and by sewing a row of try crocheting <laughs> by crocheting a row of single crochet over it it tightens everything up and keeps it nice and neat just be weary when you're doing the row of single crochet down here that you don't do it so tight okay you will need for this tutorial your four and a half millimeter or whatever crochet hook you use to create your top that is the hook that you need you need your scissors you need your darning needle you definitely need that darning needle <laughs> after we've been some ends you will need four between four and eight stitch markers or safety pins or thread whatever you want to use for your stitch markers it doesn't matter um, and that's about it. I'm not going to talk anymore because this, once again, my tutorial goes for a very long time. And I do apologise in advance for that. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. Uh, part one will be in the description box down below. It'll be the very first part you come to. And good luck creating part two of your V-stitch top. Oh! Alrighty, guys. I'm just going to show you um, the first side that I've already done. And this way you'll know exactly what to do to the other side. And you'll have to do two sides, whereas I only need to do the one okay so there's the first side and what I wanted you to get to was that oops get the hair out the way oh sorry guys so I want you to get to say there all right now the way that looks now if I did it further over in one of these clusters or one of these clusters here it would go right up to my neck it'd be really tight and I don't like tight so we are going to do our top nice and loose although we are also doing a row around it of single crochets once your top parts are attached and your side seams are attached, all right? But in the meantime, let me show you how you get this look here, all right? I'm going to grab the piece that we're going to work on and let's make sure I've got it up the right way. I tried to do this before and I had it up the wrong way. <laughs> had to re-record, hello, um, as you do. Uh, oh, too much information. There's your top, yep. Yeah. Pop it on your chest wherever raise it a little bit it's not going to be that high this is just to show us where we're going to put our stitch markers now you'll need for this part two stitch markers any kind it doesn't matter so I'm going to get you a nice close-up what you need to do is just drop the shirt a bit for you that's your neck and there's a like a little dip in your shoulder right there it's just a little tiny little hole for some of us the hole is more prominent and we've lost a bit of weight and for some of us who haven't lost the weight yet it's full of fat <laughs> did i say that sorry um so what you do is you just make sure your top is even if you don't know whether it's even or not fold it in half literally and place it right in your middle point right there yeah 
then open up your half this is the way I do it you don't need to have professional sewing skills for this part you open it up you've got your middle you go over to the side where your little dip is and right there you grab a stitch marker and you pop it in that little dip now I'm lucky enough it landed right in between a V stitch yeah which I'll show you right there okay you need to pop your stitch marker inside the V stitch that it landed on now if you landed over here that's not on a V stitch just pop it one V stitch towards the neck or one V stitch over if you want to do the same and you think you and I are pretty much the same size, I counted 10 clusters over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Lucky. 10. <laughs> Lucky. I counted 10 clusters over. Okay. So when we're finished, we have to have 10 V-stitch clusters over. And then we'll do one double crochet in that stitch after your cluster. I'll show you that later, so don't stress. Just pop your stitch markers on both sides of your little holes you have there I don't know what to call them dips we'll call them dips doesn't sound nice holes does it <laughs> the little dips that you have there so because you've done one side all you need to do is count your 10 that way if you've got 10 well, I don't know what you've got you might have got three you might have got eight you might have got 20 who knows count your 10 across go to this side count your 10 V stitches across make sure that they are even okay on both sides or you're going to end up lopsided <laughs> You know, it'll be lopsided, all right? There you go. So let's head on back to the workstation and continue. All righty, guys. So this is where our little white stitch marker was placed. Now, calculate how much you have there. Let me get a nice close-up for you so you can see. Now, I'm not sure exactly what you had, but I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes? So what I'm going to do is go all the way over to this side and count back 10 v's okay so don't include that stitch just go v one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten grab your stitch marker which is far away from me sorry guys and pop it in that tenth space right in the middle of the tenth space okay so that's pretty much where mine was all right now you're looking at it thinking well this stitch is over here true because we are going to do our last v stitch in that you close up we're going to do our last v stitch in that and in this space we are doing our final stitch which is the double crochet stitch all right so don't worry about that you're going to see that in a minute anyways so let's get rid of that all right now remember where we cast off yeah if you remember you crocheted along here and you cast off and you had this little thread left if you can't remember where you cast off because you've weaved in your ends or whatever else you've done, the very top row should be nice and neat facing you and your V's should be facing you when you're holding it like that. When you're holding it this way, your V's are facing that way. You can't see them. They're kind of pointy that way. Okay. This is where you cast off then. All right. But we want to keep in sync with our rows, don't we? So what we're going to do is we're going to flip our work. Flip it. Oops. Flip it. <laughs> Like normal, you're just going to turn your work like you would normally turn it, right? Let's start by starting the row. Oops, <laughs> don't drop your work like I just did. All right, so that's where our thread is, yeah? All you're going to do is find, oh, let's see if I can get a nice close-up for you. That is the stitch, the last stitch that you finished with. Just pop that tail at the back because you're going to crochet over your, your working tail now. So leave that there and just pull your working tail through and what you should have is a little tail and your working yarn together pop your other tail at the back pop your working tail in front and leaving your other tail at the back from your previous row grabbing your working end chaining one let's get a nice close-up for you all right and in the same space you are popping a single crochet now where's my space right there single crochet one yes and you're starting the rows exactly the same as we did with the rest of the piece so you're putting a side single crochet in right there and do your single crochet so now you grab your little tail end pass it at the back you don't need that for now we're going to weave that in later sorry guys we've got weaving in to do oh 
we just have to play the game. It's like anything else. Okay, so you've got your first V-stitch. So what are you going to do? Let's bring that out a bit too close now. You're just going to pop your V-stitch in that first one. As though you're doing a normal row, which you actually are. Chain one and finish off your V. So completing your normal row across to that stitch marker. Chain one, complete your V. Double crochet, chain one, complete that V. Nearly there. Okay, here we go. All right, so there's your stitch marker. That's the V-stitch. That's the last V-stitch you're going to do a V-stitch in. So you're going to take out your stitch marker. Popping your V-stitch in there. Like normal. Chain one and V. All right. So that was your last V-stitch. So in this V-stitch, you're not going to do a V-stitch. All you're doing is pretending like that's the end of the row. You're just going to pop your hook as if you're doing a normal v-stitch just start your double crochet and that's it you are doing one double crochet in that space then you're doing what you would do normally at the end of a row all you're doing is turning your work like normal so turn it around and you're going to work on these 10 v's this one double crochet here the 10 v's and the double crochet you're going to pop at the end as well all right so let's get a nice gloss up All right, so in this space right here, a little stitch there, you're going to pop a single crochet. It's like you're starting a normal row. And in your side stitch, you're going to pop your single crochet. Okay, and in that V stitch, you are going to pop your V stitch. The very next V stitch you come to, you're popping in your V stitch. Chain one, double crochet. Okay, so that's the look you should have. All right, looks like it's pulling, but trust me, it's not. And it'll look better once the top is complete. Not the top, just the front of it is complete. Oh, did I do a chain? Yes, I did. All right, so just V-stitch across, chain one. I'm just going to pop this in fast motion for you, just until we get to the end of the row. Alrighty, how did you go guys? That didn't take long, does it? Really? It's really quite quick. Okay, there we go. Alright, so there we are at the last V-stitch. Now this is our first um, single crochet and another single crochet. I forgot to put a stitch marker in there, I do apologise. But if you really needed to see where your stitch is, what you're doing is you're placing your hook in the V section of your stitch. So you're actually placing it, don't do it now because I've taken the thread off. You're placing it in that V. It's really tight for me. So yarn over your hook. You're going to do a double crochet in that little V right there. And next row we'll put our stitch marker in. And I forgot to put it at the beginning of that row as well. Sorry guys. I don't use them so I forget. So just do your normal double crochet there. Alright. And what you basically have done is you have formed the width of your um, shoulder length. Now let me pass this over my other side make sure that they're exactly the same now of course we've only done two rows so we need to do another two rows but I just want to see and make sure you can see them exactly the same and they are exactly the same all right see ta -da. okay so that's good that means I haven't made a mistake which is good <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as the counts are the same because you are going to be doing your single crochets above here in a couple more rows not now you're going to be doing your single crochets and the single crochets need to add up to the other side so your fronts and your back need to add up that's what's important the stitches need to add up up the top yeah otherwise it's going to be lopsided between your neck and your shoulders yeah alrighty guys you're going to turn your work like you would any other row it's a lot bigger now, so it's, it falls off the bottom of the table. Sorry, guys, give me one second. 
can't take me anywhere anywhere but out they say <laughs> all right so what we're going to do here we've flipped our work in that stitch right there same stitch that you're in you're going to put a single crochet because we're starting the row like normal pop a side single crochet in there like normal and then you're going to v-stitch across no you're not before you do <laughs> you're going to pop that slit stitch marker in there because that's what I forgot to do before and you'll find at the end of this row we're going to struggle to get in the stitch because I forgot to put the stitch marker in Shh, don't tell anyone um, we're going to pop ourselves in the next v-stitch with our v-stitch chain one and v-stitch yes and then we're going to do the same all the way across and I will pop this on fast for you so you don't have to sit there and watch me doing it okay just get to your very last v-stitch Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row, putting in my last V-stitch right now. So remember before how I said I didn't put that stitch marker in, okay? So I'll give you a nice close-up so you can see where I'm putting the stitch. Okay, so you're keeping your normal, you're doing your normal double crochet and see those two loops right there? You're popping your hook in there like so. We'll put the stitch marker in the next round so you can't mess up. I mean I can't mess up <laughs> you guys are doing all right um, so what you're going to do here and you've done your one two three rows you've got one more row to go and I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do that I'm going to let you head off on your own I just wanted you to turn your work quickly and pop your single crochet in that space right there and in your side single crochet right there and before you continue Grab your little stitch marker because you're going to need that definitely at the end of the round. Maybe, maybe not with this one. No, you will eventually. So grab your stitch marker and pop it there. And then do your V-stitch. Chain one and so on. All right, so what I want you to do, continue with your V-stitches all the way across. Get to your last V-stitch and I'll meet you up. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. We've got our stitch marker in there, which is an absolute bonus. So we're going to pop our double crochet in that stitch marker spot right there. See how easy it is to find the stitch when you've popped your stitch marker in? <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? So let's just take that stitch marker undone now. Alright, what we've done is we've completed four rows of cluster sets. Now what I need you to do is write that down because you're going to do what we're doing here with this particular piece you're going to have to do it twice because you've got two pieces yeah i've got the one because i've already done the other one so you need to write down how many rows you've done all right and it's very important otherwise you're going to be lopsided all right so we've got the four rows of your v-stitch we're going to turn our work like normal and this row is going to be different and it's going to be the same for two rows okay so the first thing you need to do is a single crochet in that same space there popping a stitch marker in your stitch and your stitch you're putting it through is just the two loops right there which is the V okay so popping it in those two loops all right now with this row here we're going to pop single crochets across however we do have our v-stitches that we need to replace one in there as well so the way we're going to do it is pop a single crochet in your first stitch now your stitches are these little v's that you see so that goes in the top of your double crochet from the previous round and you're just doing a normal single crochet putting your hook through two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two for when you get to the space you're just going to pop your hook in the space and do a normal single crochet around the space okay and then for your next stitch if you want to remember what you're doing it's two single crochets one and two and one in the space that's how I remember it one in a stitch another one in your next stitch and one in the space so it's two and one one two and one in the space 
pretty simple. One, two, and this is what I mean by if you've messed up your Vs, this is how you can be short a row. I mean a stitch, sorry. <laughs> Not a row, get it right, Mary. One, two, and one in the space. One, two, and one in your space. One, two, am I going too fast? Sorry guys. One in the space. I keep forgetting. When I'm off air, I fly through these. <laughs> one, and two, and one in your space. One, and two, this is where it gets a little different. And one in the space. Well, it doesn't really. You still have to put your one and your two in, yeah? So you're popping your one in that first double crochet, um, second last double crochet, sorry. And then you're popping one in that single crochet where our stitch marker was, right there. And there you go. Oh, take the stitch marker out, sorry. And there you go. Now you have done one row of single crochets. All right? So now we're going to flip our work. Flip your work. All right, so let's get a nice close up right here. You're going to pop a single crochet in your first stitch there, like so. Yes, grab your stitch marker. Now you're thinking, if, I'm, if this is the last row, what do I need the stitch marker for? Well, it's going to help you, trust me. It's going to help you. Oh, I've split the yarn. It helps you later when you are stitching your seams together because this is this, the, um, the seam line that we're going to be stitching to. Okay, so now this is the easy row. All you're doing is finding every V you come to and you are doing a single crochet across. Super duper easy. Okay, so we're nearly there, a couple more. Now, to know if you've gone in all of them, just check your Vs there. That's your third last. That's your second last. And that is your last. Nice tight stitch there. <laughs> That's my last. All right, don't be cutting anything yet because I want to show you something. Take your stitch marker out. You will need to pop that in here in a minute. Okay, but in the meantime, in fact, you know what? Let's pop it in there now. Pull up your loop a little bit. And you're popping your stitch marker just in that stitch that we just did, the little V that we just did. It, you don't need it. This is just to help you join them together later so you know what you're doing, especially the newbies. The um, intermediate crocheters will know what they're doing. Okay, now the reason I asked you not to cast off yet because I wanted to show you something. All right, so that's what you should have right there right there yeah that's exactly what you should have and you have what I want you to do with one side just leave your small tail like normal that you're going to weave in but with the other side I want a really long tail so just um, pull a loop through and grab yourself a really really long tail because you're going to use that tail to sew across here so I'm just going to go like that yeah maybe double it maybe triple it it doesn't matter I don't know, I don't know how long it'll take. Just, you know, give yourself that much. How's that? That way you can't go wrong. That'll be too much anyway. But just in case, give yourself a nice long tail. Pull your loop through. That section now is ready to attach to the other piece. For me, not for you, because you haven't done your other piece yet. Yeah, okay. Now, if you wanted to, you can count your stitches across. Make sure that they both add up on both sides. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go over to this side right here. Now, this is why I didn't want you weaving in any end. See this little end right here? This shows me that that's where we ended off, yeah? You pretty much know what you're doing anyway, right? But if you're not sure and you're a beginner at crochet, how far out can I go? I can't go that far, that's okay. And you're a beginner at crochet, what you need to do see that end right there grab it flip your work like so let's get rid of that end for a minute now see that spot there we're starting in there because 
before we start at this point because we had turned the work the other way yeah but our first row came across here which means this row should come across there do you understand so we're starting in the middle now if you remember correctly when we came across this way this stitch here had a v stitch in there and in your next stitch you did or I did, we did together. In that next stitch, we did a double crochet. So what I want you to do is not pop your hook in your stitch marker, pop it in your next stitch. Yes, and grab your thread. And just pull a loop through like so. Passing your little tail end forward, that kind of just locks that into place and we're gonna crochet over that. All right, so chain one yes single crochet in that same stitch space i should say not stitch yes and then your side single crochet to make it look nice and tall you can pop that little thread at the back if you like now we're going to weave that in later all right now we need to pop a stitch marker in there this next stitch we do here it's going to be our first v stitch so you can take that out. You know you're going to be putting a V-stitch in there because it's the very next space you're coming to. And use your stitch marker to pop in there. All right? Like so. Okay, now you're going to go into your very next space with a V-stitch. Whoops, V-stitch. Now that stitch marker we put there, that's going to help us out next at the end of the row um because this is what i didn't do in the previous part of our tutorial <laughs> keep forgetting to put the stitch markers in because i don't use them very often um, sometimes i use them if i'm using really thin thread i will use them because it's really hard to get your hook through a really thin space but when i'm using yarn that's this thick i don't use them very often all right so what you're doing here is you are going across the row Oh, am I too close? Sorry, guys. Let's bring that out. You don't need that close anymore because you know what you're doing. Just go across the row with your V-stitch. I'm just going to speed this up for you. Okay. Now, there we go. This is the end of the last row. It doesn't have a stitch marker like my other one didn't. So just going to find your two loops there. Pull your thread through and do your normal double crochet in there like so. Now you've done this part, okay, on this side here. But still I'm going to start you off, all right? So what we're going to do is turn your work like normal. Oops. Bring that up. And again, in that first stitch right there, you are popping your single crochet and your side single crochet right there on that side stitch there, or side loop if you will. Grab a stitch marker, popping it in your stitch like so. And then you're going to do your V stitch across. Chain one and V in every stitch you come to. Now, before you do, because yours truly forgot to do this, make sure that both your sides even up. Otherwise, you're going to waste your time. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they do, but make sure they do. So you're counting your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, 10 Vs, and then you've got your two double crochets on the sides, okay? That's exactly what we've done with this side, and that's exactly what you need to do with your other piece, your second side, like your front or your back. All right, so we're going to keep going at the end of this row. I'm going to pop this on fast for you so you don't have to see me doing it, okay? So off we go. Alrighty, how'd you go, guys? Alright, that's our last V. Okay, oh, let me get a nice close-up for this part. Alright, and there is your um, stitch marker. 
okay so now what you're going to do is just jump straight into that stitch marker nice tight stitch marker <laughs> right there hello and do your normal double crochet all right take that stitch marker out Ta -da. okay Okay, so that's your two rows. You've done two rows so far. On the other side, we did four rows. So what I want you to do, turn your work. I'm not going to let you watch me do it. I'm just going to start you off and then you can head off on your own and do the next two rows, yeah? Or row and three quarters by the time we start. <laughs> All right, so pop your single crochet in that very same stitch that you are in. One, pop a side single crochet and that's your second one grabbing your stitch marker whoops I nearly dropped it on the floor then okay and there you go pop it in starting your V stitch and off we go all right so it's a very basic pattern I'm so glad we chose the V stitch to do this top that we're doing chain one and there's your V all right, so what I want you to do, you know, so you're not watching me, it's going to take forever. Um, <laughs> do two rows, complete this row, add another one, get back to your um, orange stitch marker, and I shall meet you up and we'll do the two single crochet rows together. All right, I'll meet you when it comes to the single crochet row. All righty, guys, here we are at the end of the row. I've done my last V stitch. So we're going to pop our very, very final last double crochet stitch in that stitch marker right there. Just take that stitch marker out for one moment. Okay. All right. Now all you're doing here is turning your work. Now you've done this already in the other side, but we're just going to show you again just briefly, only because it's a, a different side. Like the single crochet row starts from the middle on this side, from the middle of your neck edge. Was before it started from the other side so you're going to pop a single crochet in there like so grabbing your stitch marker well, don't throw it across the table like i just did so grab that stitch marker pop it in flexel and again remember what we did before the two single crochets so one and two and one in your space i'm sorry am i too far away there guys sorry about that one single crochet in your next stitch one in your next and one in the space sometimes it's tricky you might miss it but you do need to pop one in the space otherwise you're going to be you know lopsided again one two and one in the space all the way across one and let me go nice and fast for you two or one in the space nearly there one in the space one and two one in the space all right towards the end you would have your two double crochets that you're looking at so you pop a single crochet in your first one and a single crochet in that very last stitch it's actually a single crochet if you think about it all right so take out that stitch marker you're going to need it again in a minute Oh, that's better. I'll try taking it undone first, Mary. All right, turning your work around. Oops, <laughs> just dropped the other piece. <laughs> you didn't see that. All right, and now you are popping a single crochet in that stitch. Don't miss it because that's a stitch right there. Pop a single crochet there. Grab your stitch marker. Pop it in your single crochet stitch. Whoops, did I split it? I sure did. Let's take it out and start again. That might help. That's better. <laughs> so pop your stitch marker in. And easy row this one. Single crochet all the way across. Don't miss any stitches. You don't want to be short or lopsided. And away you go. <laughs> 
Alrighty, how'd you go guys? I've got one more stitch right there and to know if I've got one more stitch, face it towards me, it's the last V there before your stitch marker. And once you pop your hook in your stitch marker, all you need to do is pull up a loop, pull a loop through. Now remember what we did before? This is the end of the row, okay? Before we do, we make sure <laughs> it matches the other side, all right? Because if it doesn't, you're going to be lopsided. So just grab your pieces, pop them together like so. You don't want to be lopsided, not at all. Okay, so there's your four rows of one, two, three, four doubles. And then you've got your two rows of singles. So they're matching, all right? Both sides are matching and there you go. Okay, so with this loop, remember what we do? We have to leave that really long tail. I've tangled everything up here, sorry guys. <laughs> You're going to leave your really long tail. Remember what I said? Just double it, whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter how much you leave. As long as it's long enough to sew, up, sew in some side seams there. I think that's probably too long. <laughs> it's, it's really long. <laughs> All right, so you may find that that's ended up over in the middle and this has ended up on the side, but that's normal because the way it's ended up is we went around along here, yes, and then there and then here and then there, and then by the time we got to here, your tail end should end up on the left-hand side of you. By the way, before we go on, let's just move that stitch marker. That was the last stitch marker we had. I forgot to take it out of this place. What you need to do is just pop it in the very top stitch that we just did there. That's the chain stitch, the pull loop through, you don't need that. Just pop it in that top stitch right there, okay? You don't need that, not really, but I'm just keeping it there for our um, new crocheters so that when we join our two pieces together, they'll all match up. And you'll know what I mean when we're done. So head off on your own, do exactly the same as you did there to your second piece, and I will meet you back here in a moment so that we can join our pieces together. Alrighty guys, what I have is the two pieces. I just want to show you before you start, what is your right side and wrong side of your work? Now, you need to have your wrong side of your work, I'm sorry, you need to have the right side of your work facing you. How you tell what the right side is? When we first started crocheting our V-stitch top, we chained our gazillion chains all the way along there. Then we turned our work and we did from here our cluster sets or our v-stitch sets all the way along here that very first v-stitch set that you did not the chains but the first v-stitch row that is your right side now with tops like this it doesn't matter too much really it doesn't but if you are a perfectionist like me <laughs> you would want to keep the right sides and the wrong sides in the right sides and the wrong sides okay so what I've done is this is the right side now as you can see they're nice and neat this first row I've left that facing me grab your other top yes just leave it there for now grab your other top do exactly the same thing like get the right side facing you so what you have is one right side facing you and the other right side facing you. Yes, so you've got the two sides facing you. I'm sorry, I can't bring it out anymore, guys. So what you do is you grab the right side, which is this one, turn it over so your wrong side is facing you on one piece. Yeah? So bring that forward. That's your right side. And that's your wrong side. So your two right sides are together, like so. Okay? So when you open it up, that's the right side of your work. This is the wrong side of your work, yeah? And what you're going to do is grab your two top pieces, like so, just on one of the shoulder seams. It doesn't matter which one you do first. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to show you the needle I'm using today. This is not necessary, but this is one of the needles I had in stock, which is an actual darning needle. So it kind of helps you loop in and out of your stitches. Not necessary. You can also use, oh, I've lost it. I had another needle there. You can also use a normal sewing weaving needle as long as the eye is thick enough for your cotton to go through. But yours truly is going to use this, this little needle right here because I just like the look of it. 
<laughs> I haven't used it for a while. I used to use it often, but I've lost it and I finally found it and I want to use it. <laughs> All right, so threading your needle, threading your needle with your very long, long tail. If you remember correctly, that really long tail. Yep. Yeah. All right, now remember I asked you to put your stitch markers here. Let me take, take this uh, pink one out halfway. It's supposed to be halfway, but I got I got it tagged. Right, that's where your pink one was, right? Right there. Grab the other side where your other stitch marker was. Pop it in there. Take out that stitch marker right there. All right, so both your right sides are facing each other and your wrong sides are on the outside. Okay, so what we're doing with our darned needle is we are going to pop our needle into the stitch where our stitch marker is and in through to, whoops, get that right Mary, and in through to the other, it's hard to do it with stitch markers in there, and in through the other side of the stitch of your second piece. And if it helps you to take out that naughty stitch marker, <laughs> because I'm struggling to see there, then do so, I think, because I found that didn't actually work properly for me because I might have split that stitch. There we go. So what you're doing is you're popping it through the two loops there as if you're going through your single crochet stitches, your V-stitches. So pop that through all the way like so. Okay. Now to secure this, you're going to go back in the same space. Now you're not going to do this all the time. It's just for the very first stitch because I like security and I like a lot of strength in my work so you're going back in there it's actually called a whip stitch this one so go back through there like so and that just that's actually just secured it it's not done anything it's just secured it now for the rest of the piece this is what you do now you've already gone into that stitch so what you need to do is find your very next stitch right there and your opposite stitch right there and pop it through just be careful not to do that because that will happen on the first few stitches we want it to go over our work and not around the sides of the work okay now the shoulder seams everyone's doing exactly the same when it comes to oh, it's going to be a bit difficult now I have to turn it to see what I'm doing let's well, I'm going to look through the lens and see if that helps me <laughs> it's a bit hard for me because I can't see over the camera so I'm just going to look through the lens and of course my stitches are really really tight okay there you go and then pop it in your very next stitch there and you're pulling that thread through there see that you don't want that and it keeps doing it doesn't it <laughs> okay now you don't want to pull too tight like I just did there you don't want to leave it loose as well this stitch is known as the whip stitch and you're going the same way all the time, all the way through to the top of your shoulders. So I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do this because I'm struggling to see this with a camera in the way and it might pay for me to do it off air. So what I want for you to do is to do this all the way across and until you get to, and let's grab these stitch markers, I'm going to take the, I might take the big one actually. There's that big one right there. I'm going to use the big one to go into that other stitch so see where we put the stitch marker on the other side you're just going to place your big stitch marker in there take out that little one all right so keep going all the way across until you get to a stitch before the stitch marker and I shall meet you up Alrighty, guys here I am at the end of the row and you probably can't tell there we go Oops, separated it there's my second last stitch which I'm going to grab that's why this, this needle is actually quite good for this part. And there's your second last stitch on the opposite side. Yes. Oops. My thread's gone a bit small now. But still, I've got plenty of thread left. So you've pulled that through. Now you want to grab that stitch from your stitch marker and pull it through to the opposite side of the stitch from your stitch marker. And it might pay for you to take the stitch marker out once your needle is in. All right, then you just pull your loop through like so. Before you do, pop 
your needle in that loop so when you're pulling it through you're giving it a tug and it's tying itself in a knot but you know what you're not finished there again I'd like to do another one so pop it through the same space remember leave that little loop there pop the loop in and give it a tug what you can do now is personally I would see this I would get rid of this okay how we do that is I would go into the stitch and into that stitch on the opposite side because that's going to remain open and I would pull that loop through again I forgot to put the knot in but it doesn't matter we're going to do that again so just do it one more time and don't forget to put the knot in like I just did <laughs> just through the loop and give it a tug and then what you can do here is you can weave that in later don't weave it in now because we are going to crochet a row of single crochet over all of this so you can actually crochet over it first and then weave it in which is what we're going to do so take that thread out that is your first side done all right gorgeous on the inside don't don't move it though because you still want to do the opposite side all right now with your opposite side you're going to do exactly the same thing except you've got your thread on this side which again doesn't matter okay you're just going to grab one of the um, stitch markers doesn't matter which one and pop it through the opposite stitch marker oops if I can get that in there <laughs> okay the opposite stitch marker oops now take that opposite stitch marker out and those two sides are together doing the same with your other side popping it through there and taking one of the stitch markers out all right now I'm not going to do this with you you're going to head off on your own you are going to head off on oh no we'll start you off now what you're going to do is <laughs> grab that really long thread remember the really long thread from the other side it's actually on this side now it doesn't matter which side you did they're both the same so it doesn't really matter because it's inside out so it doesn't matter what it looks like from the inside out it will become nice and neat once you weave all these ends together all right so here we go again the thread is in on this side so you're going to pop your needle through this side those two loops there and of course the two loops from the other side and of course they're really tight <laughs> so you're going to move all those threads out the way make sure you're getting in the loops if it helps you to take that stitch marker out you can I'm going to take it out right now there we go okay now what once again you're going to go back in the same stitch because it's your first stitch and you want security yeah so you're going to go back into that same stitch pulling your loop through like so making sure it doesn't go on the side like that you want it to go over the top like that okay and then again you're going to find your very next stitch and it might be a little bit hard to find but it's right <laughs> it's hard to see through the lens I do apologize guys um in there like so whoops all right so just keep going making sure that doesn't end up like that there you want it to go over the top like that all right so there you go just keep going all the way across there's your next stitch and there's your next opposite stitch right there passing that over like so making sure it's going over the top all right so what I want you to do continue in that manner oh my stitch markers come out Shh, you didn't see that there you go Shh. <laughs> so what I want you to do is continue in that manner all the way across get to your second last stitch and I shall meet you up all righty guys here I am at the end of the row I've done my second last stitch and I actually had to change my stitch marker because the other one kept falling out naughty now pop You've done your second last stitch there yeah pop your needle through that last stitch where your stitch marker is popping it through to the other side of your stitch marker 
you can take that stitch marker out if it really annoys you now take it out you do need to have it there to show you exactly where the end you don't have to if you're an intermediate but if you are a new crocheter it pays to have it there all right so what you're going to do is just pull that loop through now remember what i told you before pop your needle through and it just give it a bit of a tug and what it'll do is it'll just lock it all into place all right and you know what you're going to do you're going to go back in there and back through it again and you're going to do it twice okay remember to pop your needle through your loop you'll have other ends there so just be wary not to tangle them and there you go and that is your side done you can now cut that but not too short because you're going to need it to weave in okay well weave in at the end so it's nice and tight now what we're going to do is we're going to show you I'll just show you quickly what you've done so you know where you're at okay move everything out of the way and that is pretty much what you have done all right what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the stand again and I'm going to show you how to do your side seams or measure your side seams for this part here you will need four stitch markers we're going to head over to the stand and I'll show you what we're going to do next Alrighty guys, so there's your top, one way and the other way, okay? So what you need to do is to keep it the way you're working, okay? This is still the wrong side, yes? So you're putting the right side over your, like so. Oh, how gorgeous does it look so far? Oh, imagine if you didn't stitch it up the sides. You could wear it like a poncho, woo! No, no, it wouldn't look that good, trust me. Okay, so now you need to grab your side seams. Yours truly made mine a little bit tight because I'm doing, um, as you all know, I'm doing, for those of you who don't know me, I'm doing the CSIRO uh, diet here in Melbourne, Australia, and I'm losing like a kilo a week nearly. So what you need to do, you need to decide how far up, just make it all nice and even, you need to decide how, let me get on my toes, <laughs> let me get on my toes so you can see where it is, how far up you want yours to go, all right? How far up towards here you want it to go? I can't even find the other bit, where is it? There it is. <laughs> Get it right, Mary. How difficult is this for me to do in front of a uh, camera? All right, so how far up do you want yours to go? I want mine to be loose, but probably not that loose. I want it tighter, a little bit, tiny little bit tighter. So I'm gonna bring my seam up to there. So what I'm going to do, instead of seaming them both together, I'm just going to put it in one side only, one section. Okay, and when I say put it in one section, I'm just with the yarn there, that wasn't supposed to happen. I mean to pop it in, oh gosh, I'm doing it again. Just pop it in a little space. Okay, just so, let's try that there. Okay, just so that you can see where your stitch marker is. Okay, and when you take it off, because we want to keep it in the wrong side still, so take it off and leave it like that, all right? Because if you're not sure, just remember where you finished off. That was your wrong side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head back to the workstation and I'll make sure that we're all starting from the wrong sides again. All right, now before we start doing this part, make sure you still have your wrong sides facing you and your wrong sides are where you just finished off that loop where you pulled a loop through and you've got like a knot on top that's your wrong side so when you turn your work this way that's the nice neat edge of your sewing and the wrong side is facing you okay so that's where we are move up see where your white stitch marker is we placed in before all you need to do is count how many cluster rows you have and how you do that is you're just counting your v rows see that v row right there one two three four and so on then pop this side over now if that worries you and you're not sure how to count just pop your pieces together like so and try and keep it nice and neat across but I would personally count those V's. And again, like I said, if you can't count the V's and you can't work them out, just keep your edges gorgeously straight. If I can. <laughs> keep your edges gorgeously straight and like so. See, the problem with doing it this way is that see my top, this one here is a little bit loose. I've just crocheted that a little bit loose and that side there is a little bit tight. So I like to actually, let me show you close up so you can see, pop your V's together like so. 
there's your first V there's your second and your third but again it doesn't matter just keep it nice and straight the sides nice and straight because um, this needs to be straight down the bottom if you don't get it straight down the bottom you're going to look like that and your work is not going to look nice here yeah? so go right across find the right side grab your stitch marker let's just pretend this is the right spot pop your stitch marker through there and pop it through the stitch marker you've got Put that there take off your white and that's where you start sewing from there down to there or from there up to there okay so go ahead and find both sides for me do this side and your opposite side right there and meet me back here in a moment and we'll start sewing alrighty guys what you should have is your two sides pinned together like so I haven't done the bottom one but I'm not going to worry too much about it and your two sides pinned together on the opposite side now this is the opportunity that you have to try it on and if you find it's still too big and bulky here move it up one if it's too tight here move it down one or two okay so there you go you have a, ch a chance to change it now don't change it later because you can't <laughs> you can you'd have to cut it all undone to get it undone because we're going to stitch this up nice and tight okay now grab some thread all right we didn't leave long threads for this so grab some threads now you're going to need a long long thread okay so i don't know how you're going to do it you could use two you can use one it doesn't matter just pull out quite a bit of thread maybe that was too much <laughs> but you know me i like to be safe than sorry Alrighty. so what we're going to do is we're going to thread our cotton here now for the newbies if you're really worried make sure you leave a really extra long tail if you've got enough yarn personally i think i've left far too much you know what i'm going to cut it a bit look, look how long it is can't even show you it's so long i'm just going to cut it a little bit because i know that i'm going to struggle to get those ends through so there you go all right so you can make it single if you like don't stress too much it won't come undone especially once we put our rows of single crochet in the rounds all right so there's the bottom part of your work making sure you are still working on the wrong sides of your work okay making sure you're doing that okay all right so we are now officially here you're going to pop your needle in through the stitch where your little bulky little stitch there is or if you're on the other side pop it in your third chain so it's one two and three all right so just pull that loop through not all the way just go three quarters of the way all right because you want to go over that we're going to sew over it so that way um it locks it into place if you want to pop a knot there you can in fact it might pay to do a quick knot just do a little quick knot around the work just around your work like so all right and that'll stop it from moving around and in your next stitch and in the same stitch sorry you're going to pop it through again why because you know me i'm a big stickler i truly am a big stickler so you're just going to pop it straight through again except this time when you pull it through remember before when i showed you how to pop it through the loop that's what you're going to do now being careful not to grab all these little tails here you don't want those and there's your loop so what you're going to do just pop your needle through that loop and that's just going to knot it one more time yeah i love my reassurance and then you are going to so what you're going to do is try and keep as even as you can you're going to whip stitch it again through how close am i not close enough let's go right up here all right so you're going to whip stitch it through your stitches there that's your second stitch your st second chain and your second from here as well now this is going to get all tangled with all these yarns so just be weary yeah no more knotting we should be all right now okay and then go all you need to do is find loops anywhere don't stress too much about if it's in the right place or the wrong place just find um, as close to each other as you can making sure you're not going over those little knots there because again like I said we're going to be crocheting over those little tails so don't stress too much about it so all you're doing is whip stitching across all the way and you can pop it anywhere but it must kind of go through stitches 
I think, because really important to get through stitches. My hand's a bit shaky, guys, because I was carrying something <laughs> heavy for about 20 minutes before, and look at it shake. <laughs> I don't usually shake when I do my tutorials, but oh, dear, it goes to show you how, how weak you get after a while when you don't do those sort of, you know, exercises. <laughs> so there you go. So I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do this, okay? But I am going to send you off on your own. Don't do this. See, don't do that, what I just did. All right, just be weary not to do that. All right, head off on your own and whip stitch all the way across until you get to your stitch marker. Now, if you find you're a little bit off and it happens, give your work a big stretch. And if you like, you can pop a couple of stitch markers along the way. I'm not going to pop them in, just pretend that they're in right there. And another one around middle somewhere like so and what it does is it just helps you to keep your work as straight as possible because I know once you're doing it you might find you move it around too much so this way you know you're just going to whip stitch till you get to this stitch marker and then you think oh great I'm even so you whip stitch until you get to your next stitch marker and if not you straighten it out and make it even okay so go ahead and do that all the way across get to your final stitch marker and I shall meet you up Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. I'm just going to pop my needle in that final stitch there and the final stitch of the stitch marker. I've just split the yarn, I can feel that. Oh, here we go. Now we're in. Let's take that stitch marker out for now. Alright, now what we're going to do, like I did before, just pop your needle through the loop. And I just want to see where I am make sure I'm, no, I'm going to go one more over because I want to get into the tighter part of the stitch right there okay so go there whoops there you go grab that little loop again don't lose it and make a little knot because I made one before I'm not going to go any further I'll do one more just to be safe whoops that's going the wrong way hello Mary get it right all right and remember to do that okay so all we're going to do cut that end so not only did I have we're going to weave that in later by the way not only did I have plenty of yarn but I've got enough yarn to do the other side as well oh maybe not I might I might put a bit more on get rid of that now just quickly have a careful look at your work making sure everything is sewn up nicely all right there you go that's sewn up nicely all done undo it because You've got to do the other side yet, which is there. All right. So I'm not going to show you this part. You know what you're doing. Head off on your own. Do the other side. Meet me up here and get ready for what we're going to do next. All righty, guys. Where you should be. This is the last one we just did, and we've got the little tail end. Leave those tail ends. We'll sort those out in a minute. But for now, what you should have literally is one top complete. However, we're not finished yet. We're going to turn it in the right way. So turn your work in the right way. Like so. So this is the right side of your work now. And this is where we're going to be working on the right side of our work. And we're going to start with our sleeve holes right here. So grab yourself some more yarn. There's your sleeve hole right there. See that little middle section where we just finished sewing up? And you have that knot right there. Yes, you're going to grab your hook and you can use the same size hook for this. It doesn't have to be a smaller hook or a larger hook. Just use the same hook that you use to crochet your uh, top together. Now there's your seam line right there. Nice tight seam line. So we're going to start just after the seam line. Only because that's going to be very, very tight there. Okay, so grabbing your thread and pulling your loop through like you would normally and just grab that tail end passing it forward a little bit it's too long make that a bit smaller chaining one and you're going to pop a nice tight chain there by the way you're going to pop a single crochet in the same stitch right there oops and then you're going to pop a <laughs> stitch marker in there for sure otherwise you know that'll be the end of it and yours truly won't be able to fire it at the end of the row <laughs> <laughs> all right so now what you're doing 
is you're putting a single crochet around your um, hole but you are popping two single crochets I'm going to crochet over this tail a little bit two single crochets in each section so you could go over the space I find that a little bit um, it looks a little bit odd so I would suggest finding some stitches and going in there that's your second single crochet for that space all right because your middle is literally there okay so now you're going into your next space so I would literally find a stitch single crochet through the stitch like so and over your tail end a little bit okay and do the same to the next even if you can't fit it in there just jump into the next section there and single crochet there single crochet in your next stitch you're trying to put two stitches in there okay so single in the next like so I'm gonna drop my tail in because I think it might be a little bit difficult for you to see where I'm putting the hook so there's a stitch right there we're gonna pop a single crochet there one and single crochet in there two well actually that's one there all right and that's your second one all right so just keep going all the way around whoops get to your very first just to that very first single crochet section there I'll just put it on fast mode so that you can see that happening Alrighty guys, we're almost there. Now this is not all the way around, this is just the top of your shoulders where your single crochet rows are. So it's a little bit fiddly, so just put your two in here, one and two. So now you are here where your single crochets are. Now remember these little tail ends here guys, you're going to grab that one, you're going to crochet over it in a minute. You don't need to, but this is what I usually do. It helps me. So I'm going to pop a single crochet in that stitch there. Yes. Single in the next. Right there. Wherever you see a little space. Yeah. And single in there. Oh, that's really tight, but you need to pop it in there anyway. Now you've got another tail there. There was two tails, remember? So you're going to crochet over this tail as well. Jump straight into that next stitch with your single, one into the next, crocheting over this tail, one more. All right, so there you go. Oops, I'm just going to turn it around for you. All right, so what I want you to do, continue in your, your two single crochets all the way across, get to around your stitch marker area and I shall meet you up. Alrighty guys, so here I am here. Let me get a nice close-up for you. Whoa, there we go. This is where I am now. Okay, you've got your stitch marker stitch there, which is just part. Oops, I'm sorry, I made a frame there, sorry. Your stitch marker's there. It's just past the middle section. Now, you don't want to be putting a stitch in that middle section, but you do want to pop one right in that very last stitch, like so. And then you're going to just slip stitch into the stitch marker like that. Pull a loop through, give your work a cut, and that side is done. Oh, we'll take out your stitch marker, sorry. And that side there is done. All right, so let me show you what you have. One row complete. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> can't even fit it in there you go so that's one of your sides complete now what you need to do is weave in these ends on the inside of your work just find a place inside there nice and tight oh, sorry about that find a place inside there nice and tight and weave those ends in same with this one here you need to weave these ends into the inside of your work Okay, so there you go. So now what you're going to do, I can't if I bring it out any further, I can't. Just go over to the other armhole, 
do exactly the same to that armhole and then meet me back here and we're going to work on a neck edge. Alrighty guys, get excited because we've done both the sides, that one and that one there. Now we're going to do just this top neck edge here and they're almost done. Almost. We still have the bottom part to do. Sorry guys. <laughs> There's a little tiny bit more. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, I'm not even telling you what to do. Um, <laughs> there's your neck edge, yes? Begin on any spot you want. Now I'm only going to start here because, oh, I don't know, I'm just working around this way. So I'm just going to start here or maybe we can start from here. Let's start from here. There's less ends here. <laughs> oh, there's less ends. All right, so start on the area where there's less ends. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you start. All right, so there's our single crochet rows. We're going to pass all the single crochet rows for now. Just pop your hook in the first stitch just off that single crochet row right there. All right, I'm grabbing your thread. Looping it through like so. Just grab your little tail end, passing it over like you've been doing all along like so chain one nice tight chain but your single crochet shouldn't be tight they should just be normal and single crochet in the same space and you know what you have to do you have to do what we're always doing popping that stitch marker in there and there you go now what you're going to do is crochet over some of the tail not much of it because I'd rather you weave that in under there Okay, or well, maybe don't crochet it at all. We'll leave it there and we can weave it in as we, after we're done. All right, so there's your single crochet in that first spot. Single crochet in your very next, wherever you see a little space. Single in the next, wherever you see a little space. It doesn't matter where. Now, when you get to these really tall stitches, you are popping two single crochets. So one there and one in the stitch that's part of that row and that's your two single crochets one in there and one in your stitch some of them might be a little bit loose than the others so one in there oh that didn't work that became a slip stitch hello wake up mary <laughs> hello here we go let's try let's try that again so one in there big loose stitch and one tight stitch there all right so you have just popped that stitch there we are coming up to our V stitches see that wasn't that was a side of the V stitch but this is a V stitches okay so what I want you to do which is very simple one around the chain space one in the next stitch one in your next that's two one around the chain space you remember this one in your stitch and one in your next stitch two so you got two single crochets and one around the space so two in a row one and two and one in the space all right so the first part was a little bit tricky because we had to go down but once we got into the V's it became a lot easier yeah oops let's try that again now I'm just going to stick around with you for a few minutes and maybe we can just speed it up through the V's until we get down to the bottom there because I wanted just to get to that section there, right there. So from, oh, let me move that out a bit. So from there to there, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pop a little stitch marker to remind me, uh, where's the, the last V? There, roughly around there is the last V. Okay, so what happens is we're going to go right down to the end of that V and then you're going to get like side stitches again, really tight stitches, like you just saw me fighting before to get through a stitch. That's where you're going to be. So I'm going to speed this part here up. I'm not going to take off. I'm just going to speed it up. And that's just going into every two stitches in a row and then one space. Two stitches in a row, one and, oh, gee, that's so far away. Sorry, guys. And two and one in the space all right so one and two and one in the space okay so i'm going to speed that up a little bit and i will meet you when we get to that really tight stitch area okay
and one in your space and let's just take that stitch marker out if we still have a stitch there yes we do one there and we have one there and then we start to go into those weird tight stitching there all right and what i'm going to do is just grab i'll leave that down there we can weave that in later all right so there we are okay jump straight into your tight stitching right there am i too far sorry guys and tight stitching there and tight stitching there one and two and one and two and one okay now here is all that tight stitching what we're going to do just grab these two tails one can go on one side and one can go on the other like so and we're going to crochet over them and that way we can just weave them in at the end a little bit and you don't have to worry too much about it but right there you jump from that stitch you go into there okay one now these are going to be very tight two three and now we're going to start crocheting over that tail four five you can keep crocheting over it if you like but i'm going to stop in a minute and then we're going straight into oops into those tight stitches there i'm going to stop pop that at the back and then get into our really tight stitches again one these aren't as tight as the other row oh yeah they are <laughs> two i'm telling lies again three i'm sorry we're counting one and two aren't we two <laughs> get it right mary still on the side still on the side yes right there we're almost at the v stitch still on the side right there still on the side whoops i'm just going to move my yes, paste to turn it over a bit all right and we keep going all right and here's where that stitch was really tight before because we're changing into our v stitches now are we remember that really tight stitch where we swapped into the v stitch section <laughs> there we go we're into the v stitch yet oh, here we go right here there you go and two and there's the middle of your v where you pop one in the center and then you go one two and one in the center of your v so just keep doing that all the way across the road let me pop it on speed for you okay now you're getting to that little knotted area which is a bit bubbly there so you're just going to go right over it jump right into that center right there and oh i think you've got one more let's have a look yes you have one more right there and then we are slip stitching to the top of that pull a loop through pull up a nice long loop just in case i always do that just in case i've made a mistake with some stitches or you don't need to it's just something I've always done okay so let's have a quick look see now this is the neck edge guys okay so it should be gorgeous <laughs> we hope <laughs> Ta -da! nice and gorgeous right there oh it's hard to see now because you know I can't bring let's bring it out no we're out all the way sorry guys it's out all the way <laughs> nice and gorgeous right there there's one side and let me turn it over to the other Ta -da! very nice very nice all right now what I want you to do 
weave in those two ends but before you do we need to do the bottom part alrighty guys now with the bottom part very very simple grab your hook and find a spot where it's the middle all right, so that's your center right there. You see that seam line? There's our little seam line, nice and tight seam line I've got there. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna pop our hook just in one of the seam sections there, okay? Well, maybe just after it, how's that? I'm just gonna take one of the tails. No, I won't, I'll leave it there. All right, grabbing your tail end of your new yarn, Lexel. Passing it forward and away we go. Here you need to chain one like you've been doing all along. Let's get a nice close up for you. And single crochet in the same stitch. Right there. Oh, grab our stitch marker. Any stitch marker you'll see. Doesn't matter. If you haven't got stitch markers, you can just use threads or paper clips or safety pins, whatever. Pop your thread at the back because you're going to weave that in on the inside okay so now you've popped a single crochet there you're going to skip that first single crochet that first stitch because we are in here it's going to be too bulky it's just going to go into the second one with a single crochet okay then you're going to go into that stitch right there where your v is with a single crochet don't make these too tight and don't make them too loose and in that space right there, in the first stitch, you are going to pop a, <laughs> if you can get them, this is where I mean, this is where they're going to be a little tight. Hopefully I haven't done them as tight as mine. Single crochet and one in your next stitch. You should have two in between there and one in the center. So one in the center and you should have two here. So one goes in there fairly tight and one goes in your next let's see if i can put it this way so you can see better how's that one in the center and one in the really really tight stitch there like so and one in the stitch next to it yeah and the one in the center being careful not to make these too tight or the bottom part of your work is going to pull. You don't want it. It's got to sit nicely on your body, yeah? But it's very basic, this one, and it's not as hard as the other one, not as difficult as the rest. And one in your stitch there, and one in your next stitch, and one in the center of your V. One in your next one in your next and one in the center of the V. Let me get a nice close up again. One in there, two loops, yes. One in your next, two loops, you might are really tight. Okay, and one in the center of your V. All right, so I hope you understand that part. So I'm just going to show you nice and close, uh, nice and close, nice and far away so you can see what it looks like. Okay, see how it's not pulling? It's like, just like a gentle look. Now I'm going to get a, another stitch marker, a white one. We're just going to go along until we get to our very next. See, that's the middle of the next threads there, your very next thread you come to get to there which is really only like from there to there and I shall meet you up in a moment so here I am at the end of this side not the row just the side I've still got a single crochet to pop in the uh, little V stitch section I'm going to take out that stitch marker so you can see what's going down here right here you've got your join there so you need to pop a single crochet I might just pop that one tail here and just on the back just to get it out the way so I can see what I'm doing and doing a single crochet around there now what you've got is this look here pop your hook in anywhere where you can fit it okay because that's just 
tight from our sewing. And then you just grab, oh, if you can find it, this is really tight, a stitch right there and do a single crochet in that stitch. All right, so we're gonna pop our hook, oh dear, in that really tight stitch. Oh, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> right there. And then into your V. And then once again into the two stitches between your Vs, which is oh, not that bad. These ones are quite loose this side, which is good. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at that area because we don't want it to be too tight and pulling, okay? So that's exactly where your side seams are, right there, all right? So continue in that manner. Let me turn it around so you can see. Continue in that manner all the way across. Get to this green stitch marker or just before it and I shall meet you up. Get excited. All righty, guys, here we are at the end of this side right here actually get excited because we're at the end of the row yay <laughs> i'm just going to pop my single crochet in the v stitch section there all right now close up here you can see there is another stitch there okay i'm just going to pop some those threads behind and do that one stitch now from here all we're going to do is jump into that stitch pull a loop through like so Pull up a loop for guess what? Your very last time. Oh, very exciting. We need that needle anyway. Okay, there you go. Aren't you excited? Because I know I am. <laughs> oh well, yours truly is excited. And there you go. What you have is one finished vestige top. There you go. Oh, <laughs> now let me just show you quickly down the bottom there. Okay, if that is pulling too tight, then you may have to take that undone and stretch it out a little bit. And there you go, guys. Isn't it gorgeous? I don't know. I can't fit it all in. Sorry. <laughs> oh, by the way, you have to weave in all these ends. Oh, sorry. I hate to burst your bubble. You have to just pass them on the inside and weave them in through the back areas there. All right? It's super easy. You've done this before. And if you haven't and you are new to crochet and would like to know how to weave in ends, I will leave... A link in the description box down below it will be the second link you come to because the first link will be part one of this tutorial um, of the V stitch top if you will and the second link will be how to weave in your ends. so thank you so much for watching don't forget guys we do um, lives on Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. and Saturday morning at 10 a.m. that's Melbourne Australia time and that's about all I want to say easy easy right <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not too difficult. We've done worse. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things you do for me. And all I want to say right now is ciao for now.